Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. This is part two of the Rusty Ute pickup truck tutorial. So you can see here I've already started to spray the uh, areas of rust with that transparent orange. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out part one of this tutorial so that you can see how I got up to this uh, stage in the artwork. Okay, so now that I've got a majority of the uh, orange completed, I'm switching to brown. This is true brown, and it's Trident airbrush paint. Now the true brown is quite a ready brown, as you can see, which is perfect for doing rust. So I'm using that now to further detail the rust. I'm not spraying over the entire area. As you can see, I'm leaving some of that transparent orange, but I am starting to uh, um, spray it a bit unevenly to create that texture. You can probably see some of those bubbles on the front of my airbrush. Uh, that was due to cleaning, so I just uh, gave it a nice clean and a bit of the airbrush cleaner residual was left bubbling out from the front of that air cap, so nothing really to worry about. As you can see, it's gone now. I'm also using that brown on sections of the panels just to uh, further create my rusty look. Now that I've got a nice basis for the rust, I'm switching to transparent black. So this is transparent base mixed with black. So firstly what you do is you mix the transparent base with uh, your reducer to your liking and then I add drops of black to that. So this is relatively dark, but it's not as dark as a normal opaque black would be. The benefit also of using the transparent base is obviously it makes the paint more transparent. Um, so that allows for some of the underlying details that you've completed in the earlier stages to still shine through. Whereas if I used a, a normal, a regular black, more often than not, it'll uh, opaque over everything that you've done. And you want to try and stay away from using just uh, solid blacks. So I very rarely use just a straight black. I always mix it with other colors or uh, use transparent base in that mix to uh, drop its uh, intensity. When I say I mix other colours in with my black, I might mix a bit of blue, a bit of violet, or even a bit of brown, just to take the edge off the black, and it depends on what I'm actually painting. Now I'm switching to white, and I'm going to add some real bright white highlights. So to the edges of the uh, rust sections. So this sort of resembles those, uh, the panels and you know bits of metal poking up and being uneven. So it's gonna give you that appearance. And also to the center of the rust because I'm gonna add another tone over it later. So I'm putting another base down. And then I'm also gonna use the white to obviously further highlight the uh, the ute. But again, only in key areas where it's necessary, don't overdo it. And the airbrush that I've switched to now is the Iwata CMSB Micron. This is a side feed airbrush, runs a 0.18mm needle nozzle setup. The airbrush I was using earlier was the Iwata CMC Plus Micron, that runs a 0.23mm needle nozzle setup. Just excuse the compressor, that's a bit better. And I'm also coming in with a texture template. This is one of the texture effects templates from series one by Gerald Mendez. 
And if you want more information on any of the products used within this video, then by all means jump in the description below. I'll have some affiliate links there for you. It'll make it easy to find out all the details you need to know as well as purchase if you like. Okay, so now I am switching to a transparent yellow. Again, transparent base mixed with the Trident yellow and obviously running reducer in all of my colors. So just mix it up to your liking. And the airbrush that I'm currently using is the Awada HPA. Unfortunately, this brush was discontinued from the Awada range last year, but you may find one on eBay if you do want to pick one up. So after that transparent yellow, um, you can see that I sprayed that over the areas of uh, some of those white sections. So that's now further given us that, that rusty tint that we're looking for. Now I'm coming in with some sepia. And again, using that texture template just to get some sharper textures within the rust. And then I'll come in and I'll freehand airbrush as well, just to give me that uh, variation. Now switching back to transparent black, I'm going to render some of the shading within the window section there and around the window sills. Doing this freehand nice and carefully, make sure your airbrush is running smoothly. If you're not confident, by all means grab the original paper templates and uh, use them or use some freehand templates so that you can get those nice sharp edges. can see here I've uh, grabbed one of my fire tool templates just to get some of those real sharp defined edges in. Keep those shadows nice and sharp. So just take your time, follow your reference. You don't want to get this far into the artwork and then sort of speed through it and make mistakes. And definitely make sure that your airbrush is spraying really nicely. So keep remembering to pick off the tip drying, you know, spray it out next to you so that you can clean everything uh, from that tip so that you get a nice spray pattern. And I like to over reduce it just so that um, I'm, I have absolute less chance of tip drying. Yes, it's going to be a lot uh, more watery and I may have to go over a certain shadow two or three times to get the intensity that I want but I would much rather that than uh, having it splattering on me. So I do hope that you're enjoying this video so far. If you are by all means feel free to give it the thumbs up, share it out and let's build this airbrushing community together. For all of our new viewers, welcome. For our regular viewers, welcome back. If you haven't already, feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon, and that will notify you every time I put out new content. So you can really notice now with the uh, transparent black how that's sharpening up the artwork. So just uh, slowly building up my tones. And getting in some of those panel lines. 
and deepening my shadows. So remember to keep your air pressed down at all times and just use that trigger finger pulling back ever so slightly to allow just the smallest paint to come out. That way I'm not risking uh, spidering out on the surface. So adding some detail to the tire. Again, putting in all the key factors and then shading out from there. So you can see really how versatile that transparent black is. Just uh, adding more and more detail and shading to the artwork. And then I'll come back over with some white highlights just to punch it out. And we'll be doing a background in part three. But you can see how the artwork sort of starts off a bit blurry and then gradually gets sharper. It's generally the last two tones that really bring it to life. So keeping that in mind too, don't give up on your artwork. Even if it's looking a bit crappy sort of at the start, you know, you're not sure, looks a bit uh, blurry, just keep going. You know, don't give up on it and uh, go right through to the end. And more often than not, those last two tones and where you really pull it together with those sharp details is what will make it pop and bring it all together.
Okay, switching back to white. And I'm going to hit some of those real bright white highlights. So just following my reference. Also making up a few things here and there, so I'm not completely copying this reference. I've tweaked it a little bit, so, you know, go for it. I'm not trying to recreate it to a photorealistic standard. Uh, I want it to still look like an, a, a painted artwork. So you can really notice how some of those just real basic highlights and the headlights just make those things pop. So they don't need much. And I'm using softer highlighting techniques on the panels so to give that curved reflection. Whereas the brighter ones generally on the chrome and um, you know the little rivets and bits and pieces, the, the hood ornament, that sort of stuff will need to be extremely sharp and bright. But when you're trying to get that subtle curve uh, on the uh, panel, then that one can be a little bit um, softer. Doing some dot highlights in the tires just to showcase the tread. That's pretty much wrapping up part two of this three-part tutorial. Be sure to check out part three to see the completed artwork. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Check out some of these other videos that I've got listed here. Until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next tutorial. Bye for now.